hey everyone welcome back to bird talk with terrence mathis i'm william brandon please make sure you subscribe to the youtube channel atlanta sports unlimited and turn on those notifications so you don't miss an episode this episode is brought to you by his prize picks the simplest sports fantasy game on the market again you can pick trey young tonight or you could even pick from a baseball game and can combine those and get this. If you pick using the code ASU, excuse me, sign up using the code ASU, prize picks will 100% match your initial offer up to $100. Download the app for free at the Google or the Apple Play Store or the Apple Store, excuse me. Well, the NFL draft is finally upon us and there's yeah. a lot of, there's a lot of anxiousness and anxiousness among the Falcons fan base about who Atlanta will take with the number one, the number eight pick, but we won't find that out till Thursday. But today, today we're going to find out who Terrence Mathis picked. And if we have time, <laughs> maybe I'll share my little picks with y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Be before we go there, let's, let's lead up to what, what we've seen happen up into this draft that's coming up with the Atlanta Falcons. Um, you, you lost Calvin Ridley, you lost Matt Ryan, uh, you know, you, you gain Mariota and then we go in free agency and pick up some players that we think, pieces that we think that can help us um, be successful now and in the future, which is yet to be seen. And then, you know, you hear the talk, the chatter about, well, the Falcons don't have any money. We don't have any money. They can't do anything and get these prize free agents that's out there or trade for like a Devo Samuels or, or someone like that. Yeah. And, and I'm telling people right now, that's a facade. The Falcons have money. Don't let them tell you, see, you, you drank the Kool-Aid and bought into it. Oh, we, they don't have any money because they've said it last year. They didn't have any money, but this is a whole new year. So if the Falcons didn't have money, they wouldn't have went out and signed eight to 10 guys with contracts. Mm -hmm. You know, even though they may be one year deals, one and a half million to two and a half million, three and a million, but, but understand this, they spent close to 15 million in the off season in free agency. Mm -hmm. So if they didn't have any money, they wouldn't have done that. Now, with that being said, leading up into this draft is this, um, you could have waited for the players that you chose. And, and again, like last week, I said, no disrespect to them. Mm -hmm. For the players that you chose, they would have been there after the draft. So that 15 million, left 10 to 15 million that you spent, you could have went out and in that eighth pick, go out and get an edge rusher or, or a guy that's going to be an immediate impact. And it wouldn't have hurt you financially this year and for the future. Yeah, because they didn't. They didn't snatch up any guys that were no. big name guys. So yeah, they would have probably still been there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now, 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 now here, you, here we go leading up to this draft. And uh, in my mock little draft, and I've, I've been saying it for years with this organization, uh, shoot, since Dimitrov was hired. When you have a pick in the first 10 picks, yeah, um, and you're trying to be successful for the long run, if it's not a guy there at number eight, that's going to be an immediate. So you got to look, I look at it this way. If the guy at number eight can't win one or two games for you, right? You know, his rookie year or put you in one or two games, uh, get out of that pick because it's going to cost you more money down the road. And it's going to be some casualties for some good players in the near future that have been productive for you because you're going to have to pay this guy at number eight. So I said, Hey, let's get out of here. Here, here's my draft. Let's get out of number eight. We're going to trade that pick to the LA chargers for their number 17th pick okay. this year. And then we're going to get a second and a third in 2023. Okay. So now we picked up two extra picks next year where there are value picks at those positions at two and three. Mm -hmm. uh, so here we go. At number 17th pick from trade from the LA Chargers. I'm going to tell you this, who's going to be there. It's going to be Garrett Wilson, receiver from Ohio State. Let me tell you why, because right now, the Williams kid out of Alabama and the London kid out of USC is very high on people's boards. 
Yeah. And they're going to go before him, and he's going to be sitting in our lap at number 17. And that's going to be that difference maker we need um, to be successful. Now, it's either or now. If it's not, if it's not Wilson, let's go get Olave, the same from the same school. So here's two, here's two receivers right there at number 17 that can make an immediate impact for you, that can put you in one or two games and may win one or two games for you right now. And then we go to the 43rd pick in the draft. And I alluded to it last week. Sam Williams out of Ole Miss. Ed, there's your edge rusher right there. Here's a guy, and I talked about it last week because I've seen him up close for five days in California at the Collegiate Bowl, the NFLPA Collegiate Bowl. Mm -hmm. Here's a guy that offensive tackles wanted to fight after every play because he was so disruptive and he was embarrassing them so much that they wanted to fight. It seemed like every play there was going to be a fight because he was disruptive. He had quick hands. He had long arms. He had speed. He had height. And I'm not saying he made sacks, but he was disruptive. Here's a guy who just don't know any better. Mm -hmm. I want a guy that just don't know any better. He don't care who he goes up against, an all-pro, a rookie, or whoever it may be, a future Hall of Fame. He just don't know any better. That's the guy I want. That's the guy I want where, he, you know who he reminds me of? Chuck Smith. Chuck Smith was that, ooh, that pain in your neck that just says, oh, I just want to fight him. That's who this kid is. That's who this kid is, and we want that kid. Um Going down, here we go, 58th pick in the draft for the Atlanta Falcons. Brian Robinson, running back out of Alabama. That trade, you didn't get any extra picks for this year? They were all for next year? Yeah, all for next year. Well, no, th I think there is some in here. Uh, actually, there is. We got a – We got a, I think we got a third for this year. Okay. Also, we're going to get to that. All right. I think we got – yeah. You got Brian Robinson. 8, 74, and 79 are – our picks that I think we got from a couple of those picks we got from the Chargers. Gotcha. So Brian Robinson running back from Alabama, that's that big guy, bruiser guy that Arthur Smith likes in his offense, in mm -hmm. his two tight end, three tight end sets where and, and two back sets where uh, he can run him like a Derrick Henry. I'm not saying he's Derrick Henry. Yeah. <laughs> I said he, wants to, he wants to have a run game similar to what he had in Tennessee. Yeah. And here's a big bruising back that can do that for him. Um, let's move on. Here's the sleeper of the draft. Marquise Bell, Fam U. Fam U, he's a he's a big, he's a safety, but he can play the corner also. His arms, his arms probably can reach you from where I am <laughs> he and he can run and he's physical now here's the guy that can play your tight end your running back your third receiver or he can go outside and play wide receiver too or he can play safety and come down in a hole and hit somebody I like this pick for the Falcons because of the fact that here's a guy again I'm talking about guys that are hungry guys that want to prove to you that they belong in the NFL and this is a great high character guy. I know him personally. I know okay. who his agent is. I, like again, here's another guy that I was in California with. Okay, uh, so he was on the team as well. Yes. Yeah, he's a mannerable guy, and I like him. And then we we have to show up. Then going into the 79th pick of the draft, uh, we have to show up the middle of that offensive line. And Ingram out of LSU, offensive guard. Uh, big, thick body, uh, moves well. Um, you want a guy like that. You want a guy that can pull and run and, yeah. and have great vision. You know, offensive guards are like, uh, you know, they're like point guards in the NBA. They got to be able to see things and move and make make contact and make things happen. And that's what Ingram brings to the table. And then, you know, again, we still have to shore up the secondary more. Um, here, here's the thing. I got Jalen Armour Davis from Alabama at the number 82 pick. Okay. Uh, here, here's, here's the reason why I say that we did good in free agency picking up, um, the DB out of, from the Raiders, 
uh, we have Terrell there, um, hopefully for the long run. But if if something happens and you know it may be a holdout or we may not resign him whatsoever, he okay. If for some happen chance he gets away, here's a young guy that can step in and play well with some you know learning from some of these veteran guys uh, for the future. So we're shoring up our secondary for the future. Yeah, you know, we put some big time players in there whatsoever. And then we we talking about I, I, Matthews can't play forever, yeah. as we said that he he can't play for as ever. So he a Z you do <laughs> from North Carolina from North Carolina. Um, here's a guy that's been in the offense where they ran the ball well. Mm -hmm. They were physical in the offensive line. Uh, he protected for Sam Howe. Sam Howe did some great things. So I think here's another guy that fits what we try to do offensively. You know, I don't know what we're trying to do, but what I've seen, this is yeah. the type of guy that I see what we're trying to do offensively that fits um, our system. And, and here's another sleeper pick for us because we don't know what's going to happen. And like I told you, if we do take that number eight pick, it's gonna, we're gonna lose some guys that's been very productive in us and for us for in the next couple of years because that number eight pick contract is gonna be up in four years and we're gonna have to pay him a lot of money. Yeah. So Channing Tid Tyndale from Georgia, yeah. linebacker. <laughs> the, the guy who oh, played in the number one defense in the land. Oh, he's to me, he's just Dude, he's he's underrated because of all the big time names that are around him. But yeah. here's a guy that can step in and play well and, and and be a difference maker. He can be he can be that Debo for us down the road, you know. So, you know, I, and I'm not trying to get rid of Deion Jones, mm -hmm. but we know how this thing happened. It's a business. It's about money. It's all those things. If we happen to let Deion get away next year. Here's a guy right right here that can step in and fill the role uh, that, that Dion had left. I'm so, glad you clarifying because you know the comments are going to be like, first he said AJ Terrell, now he's talking about Dion. Yeah, well, but see, but I'm 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 looking at it from a future. You know, you. Oh, you I have agree to look with at you. It. I agree. You have to look at it you that way because you, you don't want to be caught off guard like we got caught off guard at the receiver position, yes. losing Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley. You don't want to be caught off guard. So you got to put people in the wheelhouse that is able to step in and make your team better. Mm -hmm. These two guys, when we talk about, when I'm talking about A.J. Terrell, um, when I'm talking about Armour Davis, and when I'm talking about Tyndale, and I'm talking about Deion Jones, here's two guys that come to your meeting room that make your meeting room better because yeah. they're going to compete. I'm, not, I'm talking about guys that you said, we talk about this all the time, William. Uh -huh. In your meeting room, you're going to have some dudes that's going to want to compete. You don't want dudes in the in your meeting room that's looking at number one and saying, I'm never going to play, so I'm just going to collect a check. Mm -mm. You want a guy in the meeting room says, I'm better than him, and I'm going to play, I'm going to beat him at. And that's how your organization get better. better yeah. Stop Stop drafting people that you know that can't compete in your meeting room. Stop picking up free agents that you know that's not going to compete in your meeting rooms and help that position better. And that's what the great teams do. That's what the great teams do. Oh, you're and, right. That's that's. And, and you're one ankle, ankle spring, hamstring tear away from that second guy stepping in and being a, being a Pro Bowl player. So mm -hmm. you have to have that in your meeting room. And then we go to 151, the Ontario Drummond. Here's a big receiver out of Ole Miss. He may not be that fast, uh, but he is a physical guy, and he's fast enough. He may be a 4'6 guy. He may be a 4'7 guy, but, you know, I don't ever, ever, ever rely on 40 times. Because yeah. 40 times in football speed is totally different. I know a guy, I know, I know guys who run four three at the combine, but look four eight on the football. Mm -hmm. So, and I know guys who run four six, four seven that became all pros and pro bowls. And Quan Bolden ran yeah. a four seven at the combine. He's on the Hall of Fame ballot right now. 
So here's another guy, big guy, who's caught a lot of balls, who's been in a system where they do throw the ball and in a system where he has to block downfield. So I like that pick. I think we talked about Tyreek Smith last year, 190 pick, edge rusher out of Ohio State. We thought he was coming out. Yep. Um, and and he did not. He decided to stay in. Um, and I thought his value was better last year mm -hmm. than it was this year. So, but at the end of the day, here's another edge rusher from Ohio State from a great defense that that's going to help your room get better where now you can have four or five guys competing um, at a high level at that position and can be disruptive because whoever wins that job is going to be better off because they know if they don't get the job done, that, that guy behind me is going to step in and he will get it done. So that's what I like about this pick right here. And then the last pick in the draft, I picked um, Donovan West from Arizona State, offensive guard. And you know, you always gotta, you always gotta have offensive alignment. You know, here's here's a guy that, uh, you know, played in a pro style offense. You know, he was he, you know, over there with Herm Edwards, so he understands what the, what it is to be a professional because he was around a whole professional staff. Uh, I believe. Um, the offensive line coach is a Hall of Famer, um, played with the Jets. So he knows football. He knows systems. He knows what he's looking at. So he's probably out of the offensive linemen on this list, probably the only one that's NFL ready. So then, as I said, in 2023, we get the Chargers second and third round pick. There you go. All right. Um, first off, it's a, it's a good draft. It is different from mine. I, I thought that you were going to trade back because we spoke about that before and you, you mm -hmm. like to get value. And I know you said this before as well, but, you know, we might have some first time viewers. Tell the viewers why you think those late round picks can be game changers. Well, the late round picks are they're They're looking at their predecessors or they're looking at their peers and saying, I'm better than him. Mm -hmm. I'm much better than him. So they're going to go out and work hard to prove to you that they're better than that first round, second round, even a third round pick and say, hey, I deserve as much money as they're getting. So they're going to go out and play for you because they want to prove not only to is not only to you, but the other 31, other 31 teams that you made a mistake by not drafting me higher than where I got drafted. And then the value for them is this when their contracts are up you're not spending a whole lot of money. You're still, in, you're still in a second, maybe lower first round, second round market base after they didn't gave you for yeah. five years. So that's the value right there. So you're, you're, it's an upside by drafting guys that you think that might have, could have been in the first, second or third round and they're upset that they're not. And, 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 and those, that's the big value in the draft, man. And that's how you build your organization because they're going to be around for four or five years for you. Mm -hmm. So now they're going to be around and they're going to be experienced. And now you start plugging in. You start plugging in. Now you don't have to go, oh, my God, there's holes we have to fill. There's no holes to fill. Now you're just putting in guys for backups. Yeah. Just, you, you're drafting just in case guys now. You know, so that's where you want to be in the next three to four years. You don't want to be like every year you trying to plug holes. We don't have any money. We're not. Oh, <laughs> I don't want to get that. You have money and you can find it if you really want it. Um, I'll run through my little mock draft. I'm not going to go as deep into it. Um, it hey, it was cut and dry. I stayed. I did not trade, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's not really going to be a shocker on mine. Uh, pick number eight, I did take Malik Willis. You know, I said, I'll take that before chance. You, uh, uh, before you go any further, uh -huh. I'm going to make a comment on that pick. Okay. Because that's that's a popular pick. Mm -hmm. I would say maybe 60% of, uh, of fans would want to see Malik Willis. We draft Malik Willis. Here's my thoughts. Mm -hmm. We draft Malik Willis. We'll trade him to Pittsburgh for their number 20 pick and get Mitch Trubisky in return. Oh, goodness, you said that. <laughs> 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 I 
to see my okay, head explode. Go uh, ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh yeah, okay. And and one thing I will say, um, just overall, I, I, I'm kind of indifferent about this year's draft. I'm not like in the past year, just like super mm -hmm. amped or excited, because mm -hmm. I'm still kind of in this fog of like, what are the Falcons going to actually do? Like, I, I'm still not confident in what right. the future of this right. regime looks like. Right. right. So I, I'm scared, but let me but, wait, let me let me what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So let me let me. Good. I drafted as if I was the GM, not as the GM for the Falcons. Yeah, that makes sense. No, 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 no. It makes yeah. I wanted you to. Yeah, I would pick on my football team. Correct. I'm not picking for the Falcons. I'm mm -hmm. picking for my football team. Yeah. No. Me too. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, my second pick, I um, also took someone from Georgia. I got Quay Walker, linebacker, uh, 43rd pick in the second round. Um, 58, we do need a receiver. I took a chance. I went after uh, Michi. Um, but Pro big, Football Focus gave me a bad grade on him in the second round. I guess they didn't think I should take him that high. <laughs> Third round out of Houston, I took Marcus Jones, corner. Mm -hmm little bit bigger had some speed we do mm -hmm. like you said we've mm -hmm. got to get some we're going to have to draft another corner in, in, in mm -hmm. these in these first few rounds uh because even though we did uh sign a, a veteran but we're going to need somebody else yeah people get hurt yep um third round 82nd pick donovan west also from arizona state the center because i agree mm -hmm. about the herm edwards uh connection so i also went with him um, my fourth round pick, Danny Gray, SMU, wide receiver. Mm. Yep. Um, I like the guy. I, I think, you know, if, if the Falcons get some, get him that late, you know, that could be a, a bonus pick. Um, fifth round guard, Joshua. Oh, we got the same guy. I just realized that <laughs> <laughs> from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So we both got a Zudu, uh, from North Carolina. Um, round six, I took another corner, Joshua Williams from Fayetteville State. I uh, didn't get too high a grade on him either. Um, but and then last, I took Jason Poe, a guard from Mercer University mm -hmm. out of uh, Macon, Georgia. But okay, um, like I was saying, I'm just uh, I don't really know what to expect with this regime and what they're going to do, mm -hmm. you know. Since mm -hmm. they've had the so car, the keys to the car, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know where we've been going. You know, mm -hmm. guys are <laughs> jumping off on the on the path, and right. and we're and we're throwing in pieces that makes you scratch your head. So, right. I think this is going to be a big draft for them as a whole because I feel like mm -hmm. if they can't produce some type of, um, if you can't get some good quality players and at least coach them up to where level they should be at. Mm -hmm. then what are you here for? You know, if you, if you can't draft, you can't get free agent and you can't coach them up. I don't know right. what to say. And maybe the fans are going to be mad at me. And I know it's not even the season, but I'm just not optimistic right now. They've got to show me something to make me optimistic. Mm -hmm. And I understand that. And we talked about that last week about being optimistic about this upcoming season. You know, I'm at a point right now where uh, whatever they do is whatever they do. Yeah. You know, uh, and because obviously, you know, you're sitting there and I'm sitting here and I'm not in that in that room, you know, in Flowery Branch trying to figure out what we're going to do. So, you know, or any other people who are on social media whatsoever, they didn't hire us. They didn't ask us our opinions. So they're going to do whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. um, they've been hush hush, uh, you know, up until this week or later last week, you know, talking about the number eight pick. You know, one said, you know, one one observation said, oh, the Falcons are not going to take a quarterback in that. And then Fontenot says, oh, we, you know, graded out all the quarterbacks, mm -hmm. you know, in that draft and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, it, it could, it's smoke and mirrors with the Falcons. We don't you know. They think it's, you know, they think it's carnival where, you know, it's a, it's one of those rides, a horror ride and jump out. Like, ah, no, you know, um, it's fine. You know, they don't have to tell us anything. Mm -hmm. you know, but at the end of the day, you know, whatever product you put out there, it better produce. Yeah. It has to produce. It you can't go out this year and beat every team that was below 500. 
you're going to have to go out and beat some playoff teams. You're going to have to go out and beat some really good football teams. You're going to have to, this is, you know, you, you can, you can cry and say, Oh, we're still, we're rebuilding. Oh, we don't have any money. This and that. this is the NFL. You're professionals. Mm -hmm. Your job is to, to put together a product that's going to be successful. This is not this is not high school when you lose 28 seniors and you retool. And I, this is not that. This is the NFL. This is the best of the best. The best product in the world in sports is the NFL. And you're and you're you're crying about not having any money or we don't have any players. Uh uh. They hired you to get the players. They hired you to find money. They hired you to teach and to put together an offensive scheme, a defensive scheme, a special team scheme, to put a good product on the field to be successful. And if you, if, if you stop looking for scapegoats and stop pointing fingers otherwhere, at other places and look yourself in the mirror and say, am I doing a good enough job for us to be productive? If you can't say yes to that, mm -hmm. hey, you better find a yes somehow in some way in a hurry. Yeah, they're going to have to do something. It's like I said, it, we had uh, Dan Quinn and was going through that. It didn't even feel like that this to me. Now, like I said, I'm just like, I don't know. Somebody asked me, I, I don't know what. <laughs> I don't know. We'll just have to see. <laughs> we, we, we don't know. And, you know, the thing is, the, the you know, the little offseason program started and it looks good. You got, you know everybody really much participating and excited whatsoever but look, when you, look fast when, when yeah when you go what where we go seven and ten when you go seven and ten yeah you better show up yes <laughs> you better show up you know everybody better show up you know and, and there's no contract uh situations right now so everybody should be there you know so at the end of the day um that's a good thing that's, that's one good thing that everyone's there, but um, we just don't know. We won't, we won't know what this team looks like. And well, let me take that back. I was going to say until the first preseason game, because if they did that debacle they did last year and don't play, the start, play? Oh goodness. We won't know until week one, what this team is. I'll, I'll let you end it on that. What you got to end the show. Um, Here's, here's, here's something I heard that was so uh, enlightening to me. I heard it um, today, and the pastor was, was pretty much saying, we're giving the wrong people credit for our success. We're giving people the wrong credit for uh, uh, helping us get through adversity. We're giving, we giving those that, that are with us, that support us, you know, all the credit. Yeah. But actually, it's our haters that we should be giving the credit to. Because without you, I can't be me. Because I got to prove to you every single day that I'm worthy. And, that, and, and I should not be proving to you that I'm worthy because I, God has already said I'm worthy. Mm -hmm. when, when Jesus died on the cross, he said I'm worthy. But, but if we want to be in the flesh, I enjoy it, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna make it plain. I want to thank the Atlanta Falcons organization, Arthur Blank and Rich McKay for not hiring me as uh, on, on their being part of the franchise because I know God said I have something bigger for you, and it's gonna be bigger than Atlanta Falcons. It's gonna be bigger than Arthur Blank. It's gonna be bigger than Rich McKay. So when when your nose and when, when people disappoint you, just know God has something bigger for you that's bigger than them and bigger than what other people are gonna ever see and be and bigger than what you ever thought. And then guess what? They're gonna look up and see you winning. And that's what then you give God all the honor and the glory for that winning state. I'm telling you right now, right now it may seem like, oh, I can't get a break, or this is not opening, or they are against me. Or this, or, okay, yeah, they're against you. But, sh but prove to them that you're worthy because God said you was worthy. And then they're going to end up and, and seeing you winning. They're going to look up and see you winning. They're going to look up and see you winning. And that's what it's all about. Definitely. Yeah, I like that as well. Uh, 
Yeah, the ho- the haters definitely motivate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you, you thank all your supporters. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you. You've been helping me. But look, they've already telling you what you already know. Mm-hmm. They already just, you know, hey, keeping you, you know, hey, they already telling you, you know, they tell you this every day. But you want to, you want to look, you, if you want to get success, you look into what motivates me is those that say, I cannot. I've been, ever since I'm nine years old, they've been telling me, I can't, you can't, you can't. And I defeated all the odds. They tell me, oh, I can't be a head coach in college. Oh, I can't be a head coach in the NFL. Or I can't be a GM in the NFL. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. We can, we're going to remember this date. I'm going to be right by your side, so I'm going to remember. Yeah. <laughs> 20, we're going to remember this date, the 26th of April in 2022, what I just said. Because God, I truly believe God has set me up for something special that no man can deny. And you should feel the same way. I do. I do. And have that faith as small as a mustard seed. Mm-hmm. He said, have faith as small as a mustard seed. And when you tell a mountain to move, it will move. So I'm telling that mountain to move because I'm on my way. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, I hope everyone uh, continues to subscribe to the YouTube channel, Atlanta Sports Unlimited. Make sure you turn on those notifications. Everybody, you have a great day. Peace.